uh, Matthews Garcia. Nandiyan na ba si Matthews? Okay. Uh, habang inantay natin yung ating co-host, uh, uh, hayaan nyo po muna akong ipakilala ang ating guest panelist. Uh, uh, si Ginoong uh, Terence Grana po ay kilala sa kanyang kasanayan at kaalaman sa mga gawaing may kaugnayan. Oh, Matt, hello. Uh, magandang gabi sa'yo, Matt. Akala ko na wala ka na. Okay. Uh, kamusta ka? Baka wala ka yatang audio. <laughs> meron, meron. Ayan, yan, 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 yan. Ayan, Ayan magandang okay. gabi. Oo. Kanina pa ba? Na natin, ano? Okay. Oo. Okay. Uh, ito po yung ating ano, uh, pinapakilala po natin ang ating uh, guest panelist. Isang napaka-biasa pagdating sa mga kaganapan sa kongreso, no? Uh, 40 years siyang gumanap bilang hepe ng Indexing and Monitoring Group of the Bills and Index Service sa mababang kapulungan ng Kongreso. Host din po siya ng programang Katropa sa Kamara at broadcaster sa impilang DWDD AFP Radio 1134 AM Band at kilala sa kanyang kasanayan at kaalaman sa mga gawaing may kaugnayan sa sistemang listratura ng Pilipinas, atin pong i-welcome ang ating napaka-espesyal na guest panelist, ang ating katropa na si Ginoong Terence Mordeno Grana. Yes, hi. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. sir. Uh, welcome yes, uh, good, sa Copy. Good Yan, evening. Sarap. Good evening. Uh, yes, uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure na uh, maging uh, guest uh, panelist dito sa isang prestigiousong uh, uh, programa. Uh, itong ang oh, ano. Oh, oh. <laughs> Alam mo, daming excited okay, so, na ano ha, excited na matunghayan ito. Sapagkat uh, ang, yung ating pong guest dito, kasi nung nakaraan naging guest natin si Calio Didi Guzman at na, natalakay natin kung ano yung mga plataforma niya. Ngayon naman, uh, sa ating uh, ikatlong episode na to, uh, pinilit nating maimbitahan ang ating uh, panauhin ngayon na si Ginoong Wal, uh, Walden Bellio. Uh, kilala yan sa napakaraming larangan sa loob at maging sa labas ng ating bansa. Uh, si Walden Bellio po, uh, para sa karaman ng nakararami, ay kasalukuyang international adjunct professor ng sociology sa State University of New York sa Binghamton. Uh, siya rin po ang co-chairman ng Bangkok-based research and advocacy institute focus on the global south. At uh, kilala rin po siyang isang manunulat, nakapagsulat ng, at nakapagambag na sa pagsulat ng nasa 25 aklat na tumatalakay sa usaping pamamahala at ekonomiya. Nagtapos sa Ateneo de Manila noong taong 1966 at may PhD sa sociology mula sa Princeton University taong 1975. Isa rin po siyang recipient ng prestigiosong Right Livelihood Award, ang itinuring na alternative Nobel Prize o Nobel Peace Prize mula sa Stockholm noong 2003 at naging kinatawa ng marginalized sector bilang isang partilist representative noong 2007 sa 14 and 15 at 16 Congress at naging chairman ng House Committee on Overseas Workers Affair. Uh, alam, alam ko, pamilyar kayo rito, uh, Sir Terence uh, Grana, no? <laughs> kasi matagal kayo yes, uh, na, na, nakalubog talaga sa mababang kapulungan. <laughs> at yes, syempre pa, kabilang din na napakaraming pagkilala at parangal mula sa iba't ibang samang akademiko bilang mananaliksik higit lalo sa temang globalisasyon. Uh, mga kaibigan, ang ating Vice Presidential Candidate ng Partido Lakas ng Masa para sa Halalan 2022 na si Ginoong Walden F. Bellio. Okay, nandiyan din na kaya siya. Okay, kung wala pa po, uh, sapagkat, ayun, magandang magandang uh, gabi po sa inyo, Professor Walden Bellio. At uh, kami nagagalak at uh, kayo'y uh, nagpa-unlock sa aming imbitasyon para sa aming kapian sarap. Ito po yung isang online forum na meron po kami ngayong series ngayon na ang gusto naming talakayin ay yung pagbibigay ng edukasyon sa ating mga botante. Maraming salamat, Rensay. Stationary. <laughs> uh, 
Matthews and uh, Mr. Grana. Uh, thank yes. you po. Thank you. Very happy to be with you this evening. <laughs> Mukhang magkakilala po kayo kasi uh, si Ginoong Grana po ay matagal na nanungkulan sa mababang kapulungan. Ano <laughs> nga <laughs> uh, Retirado na ngayon. Uh, I have retired uh, to 2018. Uh, so, uh, okay. I'm no, long, I'm no longer connected with uh, uh, the, the, no, our House of Representatives, but I still am working. I mean, uh, uh, from time to time, uh, uh, ano, yung, uh, giving some uh, ano, advice or uh, yeah, uh, okay. consultancy, yeah, yeah. Mm, consultancy yeah. work. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> nice yeah. to meet you again, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, meron po tayong isa ring, uh, isang guest panelist bago tayong magpatuloy sa ating uh, magiging napaka-exciting na discussion. May isa po tayong guest panelist from CNN Philippines. Correspondent po siya ng CNN Ayun. Philippines. Uh, kung narito na siguro si Mr. Louis Ureta Navarro. Hello, yeah. Louis. Salamat yeah. sa pagpapaulang mo. Good evening. Magandang <laughs> gabi na, po. <laughs> <laughs> Napakahalaga ng gabing ito. Kaya siguro, kahit may importante kang lakad, pinilit mong humabol. Hindi, para... kasi nga, di ba, tulad ng napagkwentohan natin, eh, si hmm. Professor, ano eh, si Kawalde ng ano natin ngayon, eh, sabi ko nga, dun sa post ko, kailangan mabigyan natin ng ano to dahil ilan lang yung buti nga may ganyang uh, ano tayo, programa dito na nakapagbigay ng boses sa ano nila, no? Kailangan, kailangan kasi nila ngayon to, eh. Um, mm. Oo. Kaya buti na nga lang din. May programang katulad nito at makakausap natin siya ng mas maayos at mapapa, mas marami pa rin makakapanood. Magandang gabi po, Professor. Okay, but anyway po, uh, gusto ko lang magbigay ng kaunting background kung bakit namin na-conceptualize itong uh, copy and serap, a voters education series. Sapagkat yan nga, yung katulad ng binanggit ni, ni, ni Louie kanina, eh, dapat ito yung tamang pagkakataon para ma-educate natin yung ating butante. Gaya nung pinos ko nga sa aking uh, sa aming uh, Facebook page, ang binabanggit nga namin dito ay eh, pumili tayo ng may tamang plataforma at hindi puro forma. Ah, siguro, ito ay napakagandang pagkakataon para eduka, edukahan natin ang ating mga botante sa tamang pagpili ng kandidato na dapat ang tinitignan ay yung plataforma sa halip na yung personalidad. Tama so, kayo, no? uh, napakabata pa kasi ng ano natin, parang napakabata pa ng mga botante natin, yung political maturity at saka voters maturity, parang napakalayo pa ng Pilipinas. Uh, kulang na kulang talaga tayo sa edukasyon, uh, voters education, kulang na kulang talaga ang mga, ang mga Pilipino. Kaya kinakailangan talaga natin yung mga ganitong programa. Eh, no? Oo, para mabigyan ng pagkakataon talaga yung mga tamang nagdadala ng tamang hmm. plataforma na may Tama. sense na plataforma hindi lamang hindi lamang puro ano eh puro yabang okay uh, but anyway uh, ito na nga uh, umpisahan na po natin ang ating discussion uh, isang uh, magandang pagkakataon ito para sa aming mga consumer na makaharap Tama. makausap si Professor Warden Bello alam mo ito si Ginoong Warden Bello eh, idolo namin ito nung kolehiyo kami Kasi alam mo, napakatapang at talagang palaban <laughs> kung tawagin natin. O, kaya nga kami nagulat. Alam mo, Professor Walden Bello, sir, nagulat po kami sapagkat hindi pangkaraniwan, gaya ng nabanggit ko rin kay Calio, Calio D, hindi pangkaraniwan na ang isang katulad ninyo, katulad ni Calio D, ay tumakbo sa pinakamataas na posisyon ng ating gobyerno. Uh, gusto ko malaman, bago ko bigyan ng pagkakataon si uh, Sir uh, Terence uh, Grana at Dewey Navarro na mag, ano, mag, mag uh, pitaw ng mga, mga katanungan sa inyo, gusto ko munang malaman, ano po ang nagtulak sa inyo para pasukin ang pinakamataas na posisyon o, o mga has na lumahok sa pinakamataas na posisyon? Well, uh, alam mo Ray, noong... 2015, 
na yung sixth year ko sa Congress, sa House of Representatives, um, doon ako nag-resign um, dahil nga yung double standards ni Pinoy. No? Na yung mga uh, kaaway niya, uh, meron siyang isang kampanya ng kung walang korap, walang mahirap. Mm-hmm. Pero yun ng corruption naman sa kanyang administrasyon, tinotolerate niya. No? At kasi aliado ako ni Pinoy noon at aliado yung akbayan. Um, at sinabi ko sa presidente, boss, mahirap ito. Hinalal tayo para magkaroon ng isang one standard, hindi yung double standards. Uh, at uh, ang nangyayari ngayon, eh, um, because of this disbursement acceleration program na uh, inamit ginagamit mo against your enemies but you're 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 funneling all the funds to your um, to your friends huh? at karong klaro ito dun sa case ng Batanes na smallest congressional district in the country pero district ni Abad run by his wife, and it got the six biggest disbursement acceleration program funds. Sabi ko mahirap ito na you, you have all of these Liberal Party people pouring funds into Batanes for electoral reasons. So, I, yun ang, the president did not listen to me. No? Uh, at the same time, um, uh, criticized ko yung policies niya towards the United States. Uh, yung Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement. Na sinabi ko, kailangan talaga tayo magkaroon ng independent foreign policy. At hindi yung uh, papanig tayo ng todo-todo sa Amerika no? against China. At uh, ang sagot niya roon no, is that problema sa'yo, mas opposition ka pa kaysa sa opposition. At um, eh, I was talagang nakukuha na talaga ako noon that I was you know, going more and more to a critical mode. No? Uh, um, pagkatapos niyan, um, dumating yung mga masapan no incident or accident or massacre no? na yung Fort Staff 44 Um, were killed in a um, botched operation that was ordered by the United States in order to get an alleged terrorist dun sa Mapasapa, no? no? At noong ayaw aminin ni Pinoy na command responsibility niya yun, but he was saying that it was really yung mga people on the ground na ilang responsable niyan. Wala akong kinalaman dyan sa nangyari. E sabi ko, presidente ito. O presidente ka, command responsibility yan. At that point, I said, I cannot support this guy anymore. And um, uh, sinabi ko sa partido ko, nakbayan na, uh, you know, kasi they were firmly in support president and I said I can no longer support him at uh, alam mo naman pag party list you're supposed to represent the views of your party. Eh, mahirap naman pag ikaw ay isang membro ng partido na sumusuport sa presidente pero ikaw hindi. Eh, eh, impossible situation. So rather than just keep quiet I just uh, resigned. Na. And um Uh, noong noong narinig ng mga aking mga colleagues sa Congress na magre-resign na ako dahil sa prinsipyo, no? kasi talagang prinsipyo yan. I mean, I cannot tolerate double standards nor 
uh, uh, refusal to accept command responsibility. Uh, marami sa mga colleagues ko sa Congress, uh, uh, you know, you're, you're doing something that's unusual kasi uh, yung mga iba, eh, gusto nga pumasok sa Kongreso, ikaw naman, lumalabas. No? Uh, and um, so, sabi nila, this is unheard of. Walang, walang nagre-resign. Kaya sabi ko, well, there's always a first time and uh, of uh, resignation out of principle. So, um, ito yun ang nangyari doon. And nung nag-resign ako, nung March uh, of 2015, uh, and by the way, this was uh, the only recorded resignation out of principle in the history of the Philippine Congress. Um, even those who in Congress who were uh, thought that I was uh, uh, doing the unthinkable, uh, they gave me a standing ovation. So um, I thought that that was the last time I would have something to do with with uh, electoral politics. No? Uh, I, I was there for six years. I was not proud of the bills that I had pushed. But in the end, um, I was, uh, uh, I felt that um, the impossible next situation to stay there if I was to remain true to my principles. No? So, um, uh, that was the, I was drafted to run for the Senate in 2016 by a coalition of groups now. Uh, but my heart was not in the campaign because my wife was uh, dying of cancer at that point. So practically, you know, half of the electoral campaign, I was in Bangkok because my wife is, was Thai. So... Ang focus ko noon, uh, very clear ang priorities ko, it was to keep her alive. Uh, secondary lang talaga itong, itong running the campaign. No? So that was, you know, that was, uh, you know, I was drafted to run, but I think people also understood why I had to put my wife, uh, keeping her alive as a priority. Okay. So, um, but, so, Coming to 2021, uh, uh, um, I was drafted again to to uh, run for president. No, kasi nabi ko, look, I'm 76. Okay, kailangan talaga mas bata, more energetic. Mas bukas yung pag more innovative. Kasi whether we like it or not, alam naman ni Mr. Grana ito. Uh, at ni, well, uh, na age takes its toll, hindi ho ba? Okay, na, let's, face it. let's face it, let's give to the young. Okay. Uh, so, noong dumating si Caliodi, ni Guzman, na he's a very... He's relatively young, labor leader, matibay, at uh, talagang maprinsipyo. I said, this is the man I will support for president. So, ganyan yung nangyari. Na sinabi ko na sa mga, mga people who were pushing me to run, na, si Lodi na ang isuporta natin. And that was how... Um, I ended up supporting Liodi. Pero hindi ko naman akala na si Liodi uh, na um, after he accepted, eh, he would turn around and say, Boss, maali ka bang tumakbo as my vice? Eh, what can you say, right? Itinulak mong tumakbo itong uh, isang kasama mo for president, eh, matatalikuran mo ba pag sasabihin sa'yo, ikaw na tumakbong bise. No? Uh, so it was an offer that I could not refuse kasi I was trapped. No? 
I had supported him for president and now he was asking for support. Hindi naman sa I was trapped, pero I, I felt I had no choice but to accept. And then, after thinking about it for a week or so, then I fully internalized na yung natatakbo ako and I will plunge into this campaign at todo-todo na yan, no? na uh, battle to, to win. And um, yan, yan yung history niya ngayon. Na, uh, I was a reluctant candidate from the very start. I refused to run for president but when my choice for president asked me to run for his advice to support him, then I accepted. And now that I'm in the struggle, then we're fighting to win. Okay. But of course, alam naman namin yung difficulties niyan. Wala namang kumimpera. We started late. Some of the our, some of the people we're up against have been projecting yung, yung ambition nila for years and years. No? Uh, and um, pero ang tingin namin, we, it's our duty to open up the vistas of people to alternatives. Na, uh, especially to yung mga young people natin na uh, have been so disappointed with the last 35 years. No? Of um, you know, poverty has stayed at around twenty-five to thirty percent. The Philippines is one of the most unequal countries in Asia. Less than three percent of the population owns fifty uh, percent of the wealth. Uh, yeah. Our economy has been destroyed by neoliberal policy. Asiran agriculture natin manufacturing. Um, twenty percent of the government budget, sometimes thirty, sometimes forty, goes out in foreign debt payments. I mean, you know, and then we are in a climate crisis. No? So, ang tingin namin, let's let's engage and bring out real programs with real solutions. And tama na yung you have people just saying. Yung slogan nila, like sila Marcos, you know, national unity raw, national unity, uh, pero national unity based naman on national amnesia. Forget what the father has done and forget the 27,000 people that have been killed by Duterte no? through AJ case. Uh, sabi naman nila Manny Pacquiao, corruption, 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 that's the bad thing. Yes. Of course, corruption is a big problem, but there are bigger issues, you know, like inequality, you know, tight control by billionaires of the wealth of the country, and the total opening up of the economy that has destroyed it. Those are more important than corruption, although we are fighting corruption. Sabi na meeting Lakson, it's it's the government. Um, well. Yeah, the government can be a problem, but it can also be the solution. No? Um, and you know, and then sabi naman ni Lenny, it's the values of our people that re strengthen them. Of course, important yung values, but unless you deal with the structural solutions, and hit solutions na talagang kakagat, eh, this is gonna get over. So yan yung just to, to cut a long story short, that's the reason why I decided to run. Okay. Nakaka, ano, nakakahanga po ang inyong dedikasyon. Batay doon sa inyong uh, kinuwento. Pero alam mo, nakikita ko nga rito, medyo excited na si Sir Terence Grana. Na talaga. <laughs> na, nasimulan na yung pagtatanong. Pero napaka, uh, napakaganda po. Commendable po yung inyong istorya kung bakit kayo pumasok dito sa larangan ito. Pero itong pagkakataon na to, ibibigay ko po itong uh, unang katanungan kay Ginoong Terence uh, Mordeno Grana, kay, kay ating katropa. <laughs> Sir? Actually, nag-prepare ako dito ng uh, questions. Mm -hmm. Apat na questions. But uh, sabi nyo nga, isa, 
So, yung first, ito yung first uh, ano, question ko na ano, uh, it, uh, itatanong kay uh, uh, Kawal din, Professor Bello. Uh, kung uh, ito yun kung papalarin ang uh, tandem ninyo ni Kaliode uh, ngayong ngayong eleksyon na manado kayong dalawa at uh, magpasya ang pangulo meaning si uh, uh, Kaliode na isama po kayo sa kanyang uh, gabinete ano sa palagay niyo po ang uh, napabagay na kagawaran sa pamahalaan na uh, ikaw kayo po ay maaapoyent at uh, bakit well pinag-usapan na mini kalyo dito and wala akong doubt that uh, i would like the department of finance um kasi um talaga naman the let's face it the department of finance has been the most powerful agency in the government no and practically mas malakas pa diyan si uh, I, I, well hindi naman mas malakas para pero parang co-equal na yung power ni secretary dominguez as with the president kasi sinabi na naman ng presidente na basically uh, i don't understand economics so bahala ka na carlos okay tungkol dito so Uh, you know, and this has been the problem because the Department of Finance has been our link between the domestic economy and the outside world. It has been the place where the IMF has pushed the mga structural adjustment policies on us, and the World Bank has also pushed on us, and where the creditors, you know, also push their policies on the Philippines. Uh, you know, to pay, 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 pay on time. And where the World Trade Organization has also pushed its policy of totally opening up the economy. Okay. Um, and where the mining industry, um, hindi lang local, but abroad, um, you know, has, um, you know, uh, pressured, you know, the, the uh, you know, the government, Uh, to favor mining, and alam naman natin na si Carlos Dominguez is a big, big fan of mining. Um, you know, nakita na lang natin yung nangyari over the last several years. Uh, yung Rice Tarification Act na uh, to eliminate the rice quota that the WTO has wanted to do for a long time. It was passed in 2019. The Public Services Act that is uh, awaiting, I believe, the signature of the president. Um, yes, oh, that's um, right. Very unconstitutional because binuksan ng telecommunications and other areas that are reserved for Filipinos just by saying na, just by changing them from public utilities to public services, binuksan na 100%. Okay? The uh, uh, foreign trade Uh, yung retail trade liberalization, binabaan yung minimum paid in capital for foreigners to engage in retail trade to around, I believe, $25 million at this point in time. Tapos yung domestic, indus- domestic market focused um, uh, industries uh, open to foreigners, uh, binabaan na rin yung Filipino only you know, uh, can participate. So, um, they lifted the ban on open pit mining. They lifted the ban on new mining contracts. And who benefited? Oceana Gold, a Canadian-Australian firm na kinakalaban ni Governor Padilla sa Nueva Vizcaya kasi ang sama talaga ng impact on the surrounding communities and the environment. So, um, Um, there is no doubt that the Department of Finance has been the most powerful uh, agency of government. But then because people think that economics is should be left to the experts, Rao, 
eh hindi nag-focus yung mga um uh, pagtitingin ng mga ng yung focus on the operations of the Department of Finance. But for us some of us we've been saying this for some time already na na kailangan talaga we have to bring in finance under control because if we don't talagang todo todo masisira tayo. So um so I think that's that's um that's just a reality. Yeah. The most powerful agency of this government is not the military, it's the Department of Finance. And I intend to do something about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, hmm. any any follow-up question, uh, Sir Terence? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, tum- Actually, tungkol pa rin yan, but uh, sa ibang uh, perspective naman. Kung, kung halimbawa, ito, kayo po, kayo lang po ang uh, uh, manalo at hindi ang inyong uh, katandem, uh, tatang, tatanggap uh, pa rin ho ba ng uh, posisyon sa gobyerno? Kagaya ng kay uh, VP Lenny, no? uh, may mga offers. Ano? Uh, gabinet, gabinete pa rin ba kung uh, kung kung uh, aalukin ka halimbawa si BBM ang uh, man- nanalo ayun <laughs> no, napakagandang katanungan <laughs> niyan ano pa- paano tayo magtatrabaho niyan nag 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 <laughs> ano nag trending yeah, yung yeah. ano yung statement ni yeah, yeah. well Kawaldin uh, uh, Bellio tungkol doon sa ano eh yeah. doon sa tinatawag na ne- we, we can never forget di ba parang kung, kung ibibase mo yung ano sa amnesia eh parang hindi naman magiging katanggap-tanggap pero hayaan nating sumagot si si Kawal din dito kasi napakaganda ng katanungan na yan <laughs> well yung tingin ko i can work with si you know i can work with uh, si vice president Robredo uh, uh, i can see working with si uh, si Manny Pacquiao who by the way used to be my um my uh deputy um uh, chair doon sa Committee on Overseas Workers Affairs no na so i know money and i also know that he doesn't show up for work kasi <laughs> sa, sa five years ko doon sa Committee on Overseas Workers Affairs he just attended one meeting and <laughs> Then asar ka ko kasi iniwan lahat ng trabaho sa akin. No? So, okay, I forgive him for that. Uh, ang problema lang, eh, siyempre, pag, if, I, if I work with him, I will have to extract a promise that he's going to work like Lenny Robredo 18 hours a day. Okay. At sa tingin ko naman, si Manny Pacquiao will be able to, hopefully, he will now take that seriously. So, um, <laughs> I, I think with Isco Moreno, yes, um, I can see myself working. Uh, uh, pero mahalaga na masabi ko rin kay Mayor Isco na tama na muna yung mga kwan uh, si club si club, no? Uh, yung showbiz. Tama na muna yung showbiz, no? Uh, mm. Sipping Lakson, uh, yes, but then, alam mo naman, sipping, eh, kwan yan, uh, police dati yan, at saka yung mentality uh. pa niya, police. So, siguro magandang i-counterweight yan. Pero but with Marcos, no, I never work with, with him. Uh, the first day, uh, if I am o- ever offered, I, I would refuse. I made a joke out of it. Sabi na, pag si Marcos you know um if he's president and i'm vice president i will challenge him to russian roulette okay <laughs> pag nanalo siya he does pag nanalo siya he doesn't have to worry about me anymore okay pag nanalo ako i become president so yan uh, <laughs> so but what a good challenge akala ko makukornear natin si Professor Bello right. pagdating sa kailangan ko kawag din yung sinasabi mo pag sa Russian roulette 
Ano so, eh, uh, <laughs> pag sa kanya isang bala lang ang gag- Ay, ano, pag sa isang bala lang gagamitin sa kanya lahat meron. Yung bala to, bayan, Louie. Blanco pa yung isa, no? Blanco pa yung isa. Ah, blanco pa yun. Ano. Oh, bala siya. Uh, whether it's 6, 8, 9, 10, paper. Bala siya. Uh, anyway, Basta isang bala lang. But, yeah, okay. I mean, to be I, fair, I, no? of course, meant this to just state my opposition. Kaya lang, of uh, course, you exaggerate sometimes. Kaya lang, yeah. some people thought that I was um, I was serious, no? Uh, whereas I'm just to stress the to stress my opposition to working with him. That's how I I I I put him. I was I was not advocating uh, Russian roulette to children. You know, but but I mean then, then, but then, mga bata. Oh, kung okay yan, ah. So no, no. Let me just <laughs> let me just say, please, children, don't play this game. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, Sir Terence, uh, b- kasi yes. mukhang may maraming may, may, may tatanong din. Mukhang may follow-up din si si Mr. Uh, Louis Oreta Navarro. Pungkol yeah. dyan. Uh, uh, maganda rin okay. yung kanyang sasabihin. Louis, uh, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, 